All right, so we just walked in the PRI show, walk in the front door. First thing we see is our friend Robin Shoots car. In the PWR booth. And our friendly neighborhood engineer, Brian from PWR is here. I guess. He's the guy that's designed all the cooling stuff on the car. They've been working with us a lot on trying to make the cooling of the car better and better and better, more efficient, lighter weight, simpler package, and we've got tons of cool stuff to talk about. Man. I think you came to us with pretty much an open imagination for like, hey, anything that anything that we need to do, we'll do. Um, which, from an engineering perspective, is like it's like gold. This um, is so fun. Yeah. Do you think there's a chance? that we could take a look at the way you guys build these things. Maybe a sneak peek into the build shop, since you guys are here. Absolutely, we could totally do that. And I would be honored to, sh to show you around PWR uh, North America. Cool, well, with that being said, we're gonna go to PWR, check out the way they actually build these things in the shop and what they've got going on there, because I think all of us will find that really, really cool. Well, we made it here. Are you ready to show us the way that you guys make radiators? Because I'm really anxious to see that. I've always looked at radiators and like hypothesized how they would be made in my head, but I really have no idea. Yeah. And I'm excited to see how, how it's actually done. Yeah, um, excited to show you around. This is um, PWR's North America facility. Um, we also have our parent company in Australia, and then we have a, uh, another location at Silverstone which is just warehousing. Um, but this facility basically supports all of North American production for um, different OEMs, custom vehicles like yours, um, emerging tech, uh, some military stuff, and some aerospace stuff. Well, let's check it out. Let's see how they do it. Let's do it. Too loud. Um, a, a quick history, PWR bought CNR um, about five or six years ago. Um, CNR was well established as uh, producing radios for NASCAR, Sprint Car, um, a lot of dirt late model stuff. Um, about five or six years ago, PWR decided they wanted to expand and have more of a North American presence. So they bought CNR. Um, Back then, when I started, this was actually um, where all the machining happened. So there was no core production at all here. Um, so this is basically from, from about four years ago, this is all brand new, um, brand new furnace, um, as well as all the processes we had to take from Australia, train new people um, to create uh, quality products. Um, which is always a, a big struggle to take a whole brand new workforce and ensure you're replicating like your parent company. So this is where a lot of effort's been placed um, to grow our business and to make us a lot more flexible in helping you know customers like you guys, where we can basically make anything we want now, um, which is really cool. Um, so this is um, this is pen production where we take. All the different sizes of uh, the raw material of coil you see stacked up, um, and basically run it through these machines and create create the pin. Um, yeah, I think. So this is what your your fins look like out of the radiator. It's like a slinky. Yeah. And we're, one of the nerdy things is, you know, a person would just look at this and just be like, oh, it's just it's just thin. You know, it's nothing, nothing that fancy, but when you look really close, you see, you see the louvers built in. Oh wow! And these louvers actually play a massive role in how your efficiency is going to be for um, for thermal Does transfer. Does the air? Um, it's a lot for gra yeah, grabbing more air, like creating more surface area. Um, so they're not, you know, they're actually. You can see like really closely. They're kind of like scoops, like little scoops, and you can. These actually play a really big role and you can kind of change the tooling to make these scoops different angles. 
Eric, if you look in there. This back, um, they'll put a header plate on. So you basically, they'll stack it, they'll bound it, bind it up, and then they'll take that over to the, the plating table. And now a person has to physically take a header plate that has slots made just for that core and tap it all the way on, work it down without um, bending or damaging any of the tubes or pin that's already been like processed. Um, which is really hard. Like it looks, it looks way easier than it is. But when you actually try it, it you, you end up doing a lot and destroying a lot of cores in the process. Of you can tell that they do it every day, all day. Yeah. When you try to do it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So the stack height is always is always what we're trying to fight with and, and make sure we're as close to the customer's requirements. Because um, you say you want, you know, can I fill up a space 22 inches wide? Well, we're always kind of bound by, you always have a fin and you have a tube. Just structural, right? Like the end ones without the holes in them are just for structure. Yeah. And then you have um, fin tube, fin tube, fin tube. Yeah, and we'll have, you'll have a clad fin between the last row of fin and what we call it the side band um, to ensure you get you know proper structure all the way through the core because a lot of times we'll use the the, uh, the side bands as mounting features and in the final product. So. Okay, so yeah, these don't have holes in them because you don't want them to leak and you want them to be more structural. Um, yeah, and you can't have exposed fin be like on the out your final product. So you need something to. Yeah, I've seen a lot of radiators where they just like cut it, leave the half the fin shown, and then they just put like a little sheet metal cover over it. Um, but this looks you, like it's a you, lot cleaner of a process because the core's actually made this size. Yeah, so and I think, I think you, you probably do gain some structural rigidity doing it this way versus, versus it just covering it all up. Yeah. So this is our, bra our, our cab brace furnace. We use nitrogen um, gas to, to shield um, all the cores while they're going through to make sure we have a, a clean braze. This is custom built from PWR Australia. It's basically responsible for washing the parts. Um, so it's a special chemical solution that makes sure we are, our cleanliness is super high. So it, although it just looks like a cookie oven, it's actually uh, it's actually quite tricky. And then it's, there's, there's different sections where they're bringing up the heat and then rolling it back down in different ways. and you want perfect curves of heating up and cooling down. Um, and I think most of the parts end up getting to around 600C, give or take, um, before coming up at the end, being more That's cool. 30C, but. So you're just like set the parts that they were just making over there on here, and then it just runs through and comes out the other end as a finished braised core. Yep, finished braised core. I think uh, normally it's about an hour and a half process. Um, and it's like just a like, really long pizza oven. Yes, and they just try to do their best to do, do the best that they can just to keep it kind of going. Because um, this is, you know, another time consuming process. Like, well, basically, the cores will come out of the furnace. And one of the biggest things is we don't want to take a core, send it to weld, and then have the core leak. Um, so this is kind of the processing area to, to, to make sure the core is actually um, you know, leak free before we send it downstream because it's, it's, uh, it's very time consuming to if a welder welds up an entire thing only to find out there's a, there's a, there's a leak here. So this is a special tank um, we built in house to basically take the cores, the operators will find whatever tank uh, fits appropriately for the headers and then dunk it and look for air. Um, bubbles. It's not a very sophisticated method, but it's, it's quite effective. Uh, yeah, so in a nutshell, that was, that was basically the core build area. Um, that gets a large portion of our attention just because that's such I mean that that is the bread and butter of what we're making. Um, we'll see we'll see the machining department and welding, which is also critical. But unless we start with something good here, there's no point in doing all that. So we take a lot of a lot of care and 
and uh, focus to make sure everything flows through here really well. I noticed the O-ring groove here in a, in a billet piece, and I'm not familiar with that, but being on a radiator, what, what is this for? Um, so it's really critical for, for, for maximizing efficiency to have the, your inlet duct and exit duct perfectly sealed. Um, as soon as you start losing air, efficiency starts going down and down, and so like high performance applications, in this one particular, they'll weld this billet flange so they have that perfect mating surface to their carbon ductwork. Because um, typically, if you've seen a normal radiator, you might have welds and there might be some irregularities, which a lot of times you can take up with thick foam, but they want to minimize their package. So that's, that was the way to achieve that. Machining department, um, like I said, it used to be on that side of the building, and we all this is new building. Um, past this wall constructed three or four years ago to expand operation. Weld actually used to be where sheet metal just was. So okay. the whole place is kind of really reshuffled in order to, you know, grow with the business. Um, and actually, in fact, we've got a new space being built just down the street where all this machinery is going to move in like about this. six months. So there won't be a machine shop here. There'll be a machine shop down the street and we can get more machines. Um, which is ironic because this machine we just bought and we just installed and it's about to, you know, as soon as that place is open, it gets picked back up and moved. So, we're walking around in the machine shop, and I've been trying to get more and more into how machining works and CAD works, and I see some of these parts, and they're exceptionally difficult to make, and they're super cool, and they're for really, really high performance applications. And this guy makes these things with this machine. What, what is this machine? This is, uh, Variac, Mazak Variaxis I-700. So it's basically five axis milling is what it is. Uh, machining. Let's put a piece of, start out with a piece of billet stock here. And uh, from there, make whatever you want, really. Really cool looking little tanks is what we're building today. Right, right. yeah. This is super neat. You could see how like an O-ring would go in here with a flange and bolt down and yeah, yeah, this is so precise. As you kind of go up in the tiers of motorsports, they want more and more incorporated into one piece so that you're reducing welds and possibilities for failure. So you try to create the cooler as sim simplistic as you can and that's what you end up with. Well, like, and it seems like, you know, anytime you're welding anything, you have a chance for it to move and distort, right? So I could totally see we're having all of this together. And, if I was having to weld this flange to this piece, like that is a really high chance of failure on something super thin like that. So yeah. this is so cool. Really and neat. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this this machine has like 150 tools. Or... So the the tool changer that's attached to it will hold 120 tools, but we can then separate them into groups. So oh, wow. you can customize your tooling then and you know, uh, we have, I don't even know how many tools, it's hundreds of lots. Yeah, and basically we just then go by tool group. Uh, and then the plan is to get uh, like a pallet changer for this machine, right? So we do have a pallet changer. That's what this little deal here is for on the front. It's currently in storage right now since we're building our new facility for the machine shop. And once we get the machine moved, they'll they'll install the pallet changer. It'll hold 12. What you see in there, it'll hold 12 pallets in this um, little cubicle. And then it has a essentially a robot that will grab that and shove it in the machine, and swap them out. And it has a scheduler, I guess is what you would call it, 
and that's how the machine knows what what job to run when and uh, so we can then just set it up and it'll run unmanned 24 7 if you want it to yeah so that was the machining department ever growing always busy um, with the goal of I think keeping it operational 24 7 this is where we're moving so following that we'll move into the well department um, which I have to say like is, is kind of my favorite area and I think these guys deserve a lot of the credit for the final product um, I mean ultimately all of these raw all these raw parts are coming together and it's really up to them to make sure the what what the customer want is, wants is what the customer is getting well and um, everybody loves the super pretty fig welds on aluminum and you guys have some super talented welders those welds are always impressive so yeah. it'd be cool to meet the guys that actually do it yeah and these guys have been doing it for a very long time um some of the newer guys over here and then the old guys over here well old i use that respectfully um, <laughs> the more experienced the more experienced guys um so yeah and we'll we'll pop in the lenny our head welders uh booth real quick and see if he's welding something up you guys welds look amazing on all these things it's cool to meet the people that actually do it i love welding myself <laughs> i enjoy it and it's fun to see how you guys do it some of the stuff that you guys weld is tricky but you make it look really pretty very skilled <laughs> a lot of practice a lot <laughs> Well, <laughs> I got the top seniority. I've been here 26 years, so uh, it's been a long time. It's all been good, though. And it, it, it's a lot better now. I mean, it's really good now that PWRs come in, and it's pretty awesome. So I, I'm liking that part of it. And the PWR cores are the bomb. I mean, those things are just awesome, you know, so I really like that. And uh, we've got a great bunch of guys. We've got good work coming through. Things are really cool. So, tip of the death. Yeah. So these are um, these are for the uh, British Touring Car Championship. They're um, they're little LTRs that go in the front of the bumpers for uh, the hybrid system. Um, this is just an example of a kind of a spec part that we we, we turn out a lot of. Um, but. Even though they're small, they're still just as important as any large radiator. So they get they get an equal amount of attention, um, even though they're little cute mini things. So once the parts come from Weld, uh, they come here. We will put a label on, um, and then it's only one more step for our quality department to do one final look and make sure everything matches the print, and then it's in a box and out the door. So this is this is the final shipping and this is shipping and boxing area right before it goes to your door. Uh, these guys definitely make sure to take great deal of uh, care and and making sure this stuff shows up shows up how it left. So. Thanks a lot for having us out, showing us around. The processors are really cool. It's really neat to see everybody looks like they're super into racing, wearing racing shirts and everything. And really look forward to working with you guys in the future. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm super happy we were able to show you guys around, um, and I think I love the fact that those guys get to get to see some people come in and use their products and, and see how awesome it is. And really, you know, every all they're all really proud of what they do. So I think they should. Be. I, I, they I think really I think they I think they love love showing off. So I'm really glad. Oh yeah, they have around. some cool stuff to show off. Yeah. Well, that was an amazing experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so that we can keep bringing you cool content. We're going to try to keep coming up with great ideas like this and show you guys stuff that goes into making really fast cars.